Exchange of germplasm on for plant genetic resources is an important process which is taking place ever since between communities, between farmers to, in, to, to improve and increase the diversity of their crops they are growing to be able to adapt to changing climate conditions and which is nowadays very important with the climate change uh, coming up. At some point countries still need to access resources from other countries for them to be able to use, like in climate change, for mitigation and adaptation. We need to make sure that our, our farming systems are adaptive and we need to make sure that we have resilient crops. It's really important a week like this because there's a lot going on, not only in Africa where we are here now, but in the world in general. There's a lot of pressure building, climate change adaptation, sustainable use of plant genetic resources, uh, the issue of sustainable development in general, they are all interlinked. We note that climate change impacts on genetic resources, whether they are for food and agriculture or whether they are under the Nagoya Protocol. So it is important that both the Nagoya Protocol and the International Treaty are treated as complementary to each other for sustainable development of the African continent. Africa is rich in biodiversity. It has many countries that are centers of origin of genetic diversity and genetic resources in Africa. So it is paramount for Africa to make use of that diversity and to make use of its genetic resources for ultimately resulting with sustainable development. Research in genetic resources, as we know, it results in uh, curbing a lot of the challenges that the, con that, that the continent faces in terms of uh, climate change challenges and um, building climate resilient uh, countries and communities. So it is important for the continent to make use of its genetic resources and the traditional knowledge associated to genetic resources to ultimately benefit its economic development. Okay, it's important to bring people together like we are in this meeting, partly as a result of this historical divide between the agricultural sector and the environment sector. Um, to date, uh, both sectors have worked more or less independently in developing plans and processes, both at national levels but even at international levels, uh, to address conservation, sustainable use, access and benefit sharing associated with uh, genetic resources. And as a result of that, you've got two different systems being launched that don't connect and don't talk to each other. Effectivement, en tant que financier, j'ai appris beaucoup. Euh, en tant que point focal du FEM, je travaille euh, sur les domaines d'intervention du FEM, euh, la biodiversité, euh, la dégradation des terres qui ont un lien avec le protocole de Nagoya et le traité international. En vrai dire, je n'avais pas d'informations par rapport à ces domaines-là puisqu'on traite directement avec le point focal biodiversité. Ici, j'ai appris beaucoup. J'ai appris beaucoup sur le droit des agriculteurs, j'ai appris beaucoup sur euh, les banques génétiques qui existent. J'ai appris beaucoup aussi sur euh, les liens que nos pays peuvent avoir avec euh, l'Union africaine. Well, we had um, 
a big diversity of uh, participants this way, having representatives from countries from all over the, the continent. And then also within each of the, the country groups, uh, it also brought a lot of um, different perspectives, and I think new perspectives to uh, the issues that, that we traditionally consider um, in, in our uh, organizations, involving climate change and planning and um, financial people has uh, really enriched, I think, the, the, the level of um, discussion that we've had this week. Yeah, one other thing it, it did was that it uh, emphasized the fact that, um, you know, the work that people do has linkages and affects what others are doing in other sectors and uh, made them realize that, you know, they can actually uh, do much better if they work together, you know, collaborate, coordinate. Uh, they can leverage on resources available in other areas and um, uh, ultimately, uh, you know, for the benefit of the, the, the entire system and the country as well. J'ai appris euh, qu'il y a plusieurs traités, plusieurs traités et plusieurs euh, protocoles qui ont été signés qui avant n'étaient pas bien connus de la part de, de nos planificateurs au niveau du ministère du plan. Mais ça nous a permis de nous retrouver ensemble avec ces différents experts et nous avons appris beaucoup de choses qui se sont passées dans le pays. The African Union has actually developed guidelines for the coordinated implementation of the Nagoya Protocol as it relates to the multilateral system with regards to the treaty, which actually gives policy direction to the member states as to what kind of policy measures they would need to take at the national level, what kind of role that they need to play at the sub-regional level, because the member states belong to sub-regions as well, and what kind of role that they wish to take as a continent in terms of their African common positions. Now, the intended um, role moving forward is to also develop uh, some sort of guidelines or decision-making tool that addresses the treaty issues and that could supplement what's contained in the AU guidelines. One thing that I've really realized is that no mandate is standalone. They're all like interrelated, so we need to work together in our planning, implementation, monitoring and evaluation. Frappé, c'est surtout la convergence des idées et des préoccupations dans le cadre de l'interface entre le protocole de Nagoya et les ressources phytogénétiques pour l'alimentation et l'agriculture. I think that the it is very important to consider plant resources and genetic resources at large as a key tool for adaptation to climate change and the things to come, uh, because uh, we're going to have to move. Um, things around and uh, those uh, most likely to suffer first are plants that can actually move slower so they're going to actually need all the help they can uh, to actually adapt to the upcoming changes in climate. Bien, étant financier, travaillant pour l'environnement, je sais que avec les changements climatiques, euh, les variations du climat ont des conséquences néfastes sur euh, le climat. Donc euh, on aura des problèmes sur le plan de la sécurité alimentaire. Pour prévenir cela, la mise en œuvre de ces accords pourront aider énormément nos pays africains, les communautés, à la base qui sont les détenteurs de ces gènes, à, à, euh, comme on appelle, conserver ces gènes et afin de nous éviter des catastrophes dans le futur. It's essential that we take advantage of the the potential that these international commitments that countries have made have to contribute to, to national planning and development opportunities, including adaptation to stresses associated with changing climates, to uh, development uh, and recognition of, of local people's rights to manage resources as part of a, an ongoing process to empower them to make better use of their resources and to be able to contribute to national strategies and plans for using biological diversity. Wow! <laughs> Yay! <laughs>